Cardinal Supage heckled in Chicago at the Chicago March for Life. Kind of something out of the medieval times. Canterbury Tales, Dante's Inferno, mocking the clergy. In this case, Cardinal Supage stands in as the number one guy for Pope Francis. I've been saying it many times on this podcast, on YouTube. Cardinal Supich is the number one guy. He stands in. He is the vicar for Pope Francis in the United States of America. I'm going to explain why that is. But before I do, I'm going to show you two clips. I'll show you the first one now of the hecklers, um, in a way, calling Supich out for his stance on President Biden and calling out the leadership of which he represents of the USCCB. And this is actually something that goes back a while because you'll remember when the USCCB wanted to move forward on a statement on the Eucharist with politics, which was really about, let's go, Brandon Biden, Supich condemned it, intervened, flew to Rome, and we saw some other dominoes fall. We'll talk about that today. So let's go ahead and take a look at this clip. I'll Cue it up. I think I have it ready. I certainly do. And here we go. If you haven't seen it yet, let me move this image here. Maybe adjust the screen a little bit. Okay. And then just listen carefully to, to what the crowd's saying and what Cardinal Supich is saying. Here it goes running. They're not here to respect the unborn, they're not here to respect you. So tell them at the USCCB General Assembly, you did not respect the unborn. To life at all stages, we're fighting to defend the truth. I don't know who these people are, the people in the crowd, but they've been following the uh, the story, the pro life story, going back USCCB, Supich's leadership, and then of course the president. Here it goes. We're born in order not to die. But in order to begin, now tell the USCCB is that you will continue to fight for the right to the life of the unborn. That's what should unite us all. That's what's so important. God bless you all. Shame! 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 All right, there it is. There it is. Let's get started. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about what they're saying. and We'll look at another full clip and we'll hear Cardinal Subic's entire speech. Before we do, of course, we're going to ask for the grace of God, the presence of the Holy Ghost in our lives. The best way to do that is to pray the prayer that the second person of the Trinity gave us to pray to the first person of the Blessed Trinity, the Our Father. Oremus, nomine Patris, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Pater Noster, qui es in celi, sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in celo et in terra. Panum nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie, et dimite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, se libera nos amalo. Amen. Our Lady of Guadalupe, Pray for us. Nomine Patris et Fidii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. All right, let's get right into it. Welcome everyone to the podcast. Please like this video with a thumbs up. I notice sometimes people don't like the topic and they give it a thumbs down. It just hurts the video. So give it a thumbs up if you like it. Uh, share it on Facebook if you like to. And if you're new, please consider subscribing and hit the bell to be notified of when we go live in the future. Okay, just a little bit of background on what's going on with Cardinal Supic. Uh, a number of controversies, perhaps scandals, um, that have been really in the wake of Cardinal Supic in the last 24 months. Um, the most recent, of course, is one that I've been covering extensively here on the podcast, and that is Cardinal Supic cracking down and restricting the traditional Latin mass. He has stated that you cannot have the traditional Latin Mass on the first Sundays of the month. This is completely arbitrary. I have no idea what this is all about. 
You can't have the traditional Latin Mass on Christmas. You can't have the traditional Latin Mass in Holy Week and the Triduum. You can't have it on Easter, and you can't have it on Pentecost. So all the Holy Days and the first Sundays, eh, you can't have it. Cardinal Supic does not want to allow that. But if you want to have some, oh, I don't know, super crazy, heretical, weird Eucharist on Christmas Eve, like Father Fleger at St. Sabina, I've shown it over and over. I don't like with all the screeching and the weirdness that goes on there in Chicago. Cardinal Supic is going to give you the thumbs up to commit all kinds of Eucharistic and liturgical atrocities. But if you want to put on that traditional Latin Mass. You want your kids baptized with the traditional Roman rite? Any of that. Can't have it. Why? Because Cardinal Supic is the Cardinal Archbishop of Chicago, appointed by Pope Francis, and he is implementing the agenda of Pope Francis. That's one issue. The second issue is that Cardinal Supic is a cheerleader rah, rah, rah for President Biden. He is a let's go, Brandon, but all the way in a positive way, not in the, the way that you think I mean, let's go, Brandon. Cardinal Supic, you'll remember, if you go back to the electoral cycle, you'll remember that when Biden was elected, there was a lot of questions is he going to receive the Eucharist? He's openly uh, pro-choice. He has uh, overseen, he's actually officiated at an LMNOP wedding as a Catholic in good standing. And there was some talk amongst the more conservative bishops in the USCCB. Hey, you know, maybe we should issue a statement. This is confusing the laity. Um, it's kind of a problem. And Cardinal Supic went to Twitter, went to Twitter and made a criticism. He called it an ill-considered statement of the USCCB. Remember this, he did this, I think it was, it was around when Joe Biden was inaugurated. And then Supic flew to Rome 10 days later. And he got the Vatican, he got Pope Francis to make statements. And then that signals dominoes where you have Nancy Pelosi in the Vatican taking photo ops with Pope Francis with their weird handshake thing. Remember I did a video on that? And then you had Joe Biden in Rome and he's meeting with Pope Francis. And he says, Pope Francis says, I'm a good Catholic. And I should continue receiving communion. And the very next day, he received the Holy Eucharist in Rome publicly for people to see it so that everyone back home, all those bishops who are like, I don't know if this is legit. They all saw the message from Rome. And by the way, this whole thing was initiated by Supic. The message from Rome was, don't mess with our Biden. Don't mess with our Pelosi. If you guys in the USCB want to start writing statements and all, getting all into this, getting into Joe Biden's business, well, Cardinal Supic is going to get on his airplane. He's going to go tattletale on all y'all in Rome. And that's why you hear the crowd. I don't know who these people are in the crowd. There are some cheers and there are some boos. All right, so there's people there that like what was being said, and there's people there that don't like being said. But the people who are heckling, they're talking about, they're saying the word Biden, they're talking about USCCB, and they're referring back to this incident that I just explained to you. That Supic was the tattletale. Went to Rome and got Francis to back Biden and Pelosi and all the other Moloch worshipers who want to legalize and fund with your tax money the sacrifice of the innocent in the womb. And then he gets on a stage in Chicago to give a pro-life talk, and he gets heckled. Yeah, no joke, he got heckled. There was a tweet going around. I had to delete my tweet. 
But there was a tweet going around from Cardinal Supich that talked about the respect for life from birth to natural death. And I said, what is this? We are Catholics. We don't believe in the sanctity of life from birth to natural death. We believe in the sanctity of life from conception. How can a cardinal of the Holy Roman Church, how can anyone who is trained in theology, who is tasked with the charism of preaching and proclaiming and teaching the Catholic faith given by Jesus Christ to the 12 apostles, how can he go on to Twitter and say, from protecting life from birth to natural death? Now, I was notified by others that he corrected or his team corrected the tweet and it went back to conception. It was corrected from birth to conception. So I was like, okay, at least he corrected it or someone corrected it. It was amended, and so I deleted my tweet. But it shows there's a wishy-washiness. If you want to be, oh, the other scandal was Mayor Lightfoot, who's living in an LMNOP partnership, received communion at a Catholic church with soupage sitting right there. Later on, the priest said, oh, I was, I was flustered. I was nervous. I'm sorry. I didn't know what to do. Look, let me tell you. I worked in D.C. with the diocesan job a long time ago. Every single politician that does anything in the Catholic Church has always phone calls made to the diocese. Politicians don't just show up in religious context without their people talking to their people. So if you want to be a non-Catholic in an LMNOP relationship and receive communion, or you want to be the president of the most powerful nation on earth, and you want to legalize and fund and promote the A word in America, but not just in America, you actually want to fund and promote the A word in all countries, all over the world through women's health promotion. We all know what that means when it's the United Nations. You want to do all that? Cardinal Supich wants to ensure that if you're one of those pieces or you're Nancy Pelosi, you're going to get communion, you're going to get promoted, you're going to get pats on the back. And if the USCCB or anyone in the bishops starts to, I don't know about this, he's going to go tattletale to Francis Bergoglio in Rome and get you in trouble. So yeah, if you're that kind of cardinal and then you get up on the stage... You're going to get heckled. You're going to get heckled. That's just called being inconsistent. And the lay people are not dumb. The lay people, especially Catholic lay people who are paying attention to all this stuff going with the USCCB, they are high information. You can't get up on a stage in front of that many people and pretend that they don't know the backstory of what's been going on. Let's watch the full the full speech. Let me cue this up. So um, the first one I actually, to give credit, I got from Complicit Clergy on YouTube. Um, let me play that one again because it's short. And I know new people have come in. Another thousand people have come in since I played that video. So here is Sue Pitch in Chicago, March for Life Chicago. And here's the short clip of uh, him speaking in the hecklers. Here we go. To help him. Now, Church. Let me talk to you. Church. They're not here to respect the unborn. Their signs, as you can see, say soupage is the culture of death. Whoa. They're not here to respect you. So tell them at the USCCB General Assembly, you did not respect the, respect the unborn. Right so he said, at the USCCB General Assembly, you did not respect the unborn. Because soupage went to bat for Biden not for the babies. And we all know that. We all know that. And I know Cardinal Supich's people and their chancers are going to watch this video. And for, and maybe Supich will watch this video. Uh, Cardinal Supich, if you watch this or your people watch this, we all know what you're up to. We all know that you support the Democratic platform, the Democratic Party. We know that the Archdiocese of Chicago is basically Saul Alenskyites wearing cheap polyester vestments. 
Chicago has been infiltrated deeply. Deeply infiltrated. This is the place of Saul Alinsky. This is the place of Barack Obama. S uh, Saul Alinsky, the communist infiltrator, he talks about meeting with priests. This is back in the day, in the 60s, meeting with Catholic priests and saying, hey, we're doing these events, we're doing this public, these uh, public organ organizer events, speaking to these groups, but we just want to know, you know, part of our message is, you know, we have responsible family planning, you know, we're promoting contraception. He talks about how the Catholic priests were fine with it back in the 60s. Saul Linsky was recruiting clergy, Protestant and Catholic, going way back. And suddenly in 2022, we see not just the children, but the grandchildren of this Chicago infiltration. Cardinal Bernadine infiltration. Deep church. And we know you can't fool the lady anymore. We have your speeches. We have your record. I mean, I've talked about D.C. I've talked about L.A. Talked about New York. But Chicago. That's an infestation. That's just not an infiltration. That's an infestation. Which might be the title of my new book. It is infested. So these people call them out. We know what you did at the USCCB. And this isn't a matter of creating animosity. No one's trying to create animosity. What we're trying to do is here some consistency from the men who wear the crimson red, the cardinals. Why do they wear red? So that they would be willing to lay down their life for Christ and his gospel. Not play political games. At all stages, we're fighting to defend the truth that we're born in order not to die, but in order to begin. Now tell the USCCB! Tell the USCCB. You will continue to fight for the right to the life of the unborn. That's what should unite us all. That's what's so important. God bless you all. Shame! 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 All right, so let's hear the full speech. I'm getting this from Basic Catholic on um this was posted on Instagram, the Basic Catholic. I don't know him. Um but this is where I found it. Let me see if I can show it. So if you want to follow him on Instagram, there he is, Basic Catholic um from Chicago, Illinois. Again, I don't know him. Uh but I'm using his video and uh follow him on Instagram and while you're there, follow me on Instagram, DR Taylor Marshall. Now, here is the full speech of uh, Supich. He's going to tell you, um, first off, hey, it's great y'all are wearing masks because that's really pro-life. Okay. okay, wearing masks is pro-life. Um, and then he's going to quote the philosopher uh, Hannah Arendt. I got some major problems with, um, I mean, she has some good things, um, but her philosophy is contrary to Catholic moral teaching. Um, so I have a problem with that. I don't know why a Catholic cardinal is uh, quoting a Jewish philosopher who is quite antagonistic to Christianity to make his point at a pro-life march. Uh, so anyway, let's, let's run the clip. Here we go. This is the full speech. You will hear the protesters in the background, but you won't hear them um, as clearly as you did in the previous clip. Here is the full speech. Let's run it. You know, we come here in these days of the pandemic when life is threatened. And I'm so glad that I see many of you wearing masks. I hope that you continue to look for ways in which we can end this pandemic by promoting life. It's really important to do that. Now I know- Now he's getting booed hardcore here. 
I'm so glad everyone's wearing masks. Y'all are really promoting life by wearing the masks. Come on! <laughs> the, this, this is the status of Cardinals in 2022. And I know that people are going to be critical, like, oh, Marshall, come on. This is Cardinals of the Holy Roman Church. Show some respect. You go back in time, you read Canterbury Tales about what they're saying about the corrupt clergy. You go back and read Dante. Man, Dante is about 100 times more critical or rough than anything you're going to hear on this podcast. Dante is ruthless. And then go back and listen or read uh, someone like St. Peter Damien talking about sodomy and corruption in the hierarchy. Woo! I don't have anything on St. Peter Damien. Okay, so lead off here. I'm so glad everybody's wearing masks. It's just so pro-life. It's so awesome. Here we go. People, there are some people in this crowd here. I see families are supported. We march today for respect for all human life. That's the goal that we need to pursue. You know, we come here in these days of the pandemic when life is threatened. And I'm so glad that I see many of you wearing masks. I hope that you continue to look for ways in which we can end this pandemic by promoting life. It's really important to do that. Now, I know you people, there are some people in this crowd here who don't respect the unborn, and that's too bad. But let So he hears the booing, and he does this. What is this? Uh, he does this. He says, I know there's people who don't respect the unborn. No, they're not booing that. Your eminence, they're not booing that. They're booing what you just said about masks and being pro-life. Let me speak. Let me speak. You know, we come here just celebrating two weeks ago Christmas, the birth of Jesus. As the noted Jewish philosopher Hannah Arendt once wrote, the real Now, wait a second. Wait a second. We just celebrated Christmas two weeks ago. So as the noted Jewish philosopher said, what? 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 what is, how does that connect? We just had Christmas, so now we're going to talk about the Jewish philosopher who was hostile to Christianity. The mystery that we experience in the birth of a child always reminds us that though we as mortal creatures must die, we're not born in order to die. We're born in order to begin. Her words, counter to view, that treats human life as meaningless and inconsequential and disposable, expendable. It's a view. I just want to say here that paired with the tweet about protecting life from birth to natural death, he just leaped over the whole idea of protecting life in the womb. In other words, the leaping point here, the starting point from the Hannah Arendt quote is born to live. Yeah, we, we know that, born to live. Other than partial birth abortion, that's kind of legit here in America and in the world. What we're basically here for, your eminence, is that people are killing babies before they're born. That's the problem. So don't come in and quote Jewish philosophers about born to live. We're talking about before the birth happens. That's what abortion is all about. That's the problem. She experienced in the last century amidst the ruins of totalitarian regimes and global wars. It's he just said totalitarian. Hope he's not talking about me. The view that human beings are born to be hurled toward death. No, she said, the miracle that saves the world the realm of human affairs from its normal natural ruin is ultimately the fact of our experience that we're born. We're born always to begin. Wait, that that's the miracle that gives human dignity? That we are born to begin? Okay, well, what about the aborted baby who was never born? Does it not have the dignity? This whole argument that he's quoting from Hannah Arendt is bogus. It doesn't work at a March for Life context. I mean, 
You don't have to have a PhD in philosophy to see the problem in this speech. Hannah Arendt and Supich are saying your dignity comes from being born. The miracle that saves us is that we're born. The problem is that these babies aren't ever born. They're killed in the womb. Human life does not begin at birth. That a cardinal of the Catholic Church would get up in, on a microphone and make such a silly argument in front of people deserves ridicule. Am I the only one, I mean, in the live chat, am I the only one that sees the problem here? Are y'all with me? I'm just going to wait here. I, I feel like I'm taking crazy pills here. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. The whole March for Life is primarily a counter to the A word. We are resisting and trying to undo the A word in our country. I'm talking about the A-B-O word. Got to be careful. And he's saying the thing that gives the miracle, quoting Hannah Arendt, that gives us meaning and dignity is the fact that we are born. And I would just want to say, your eminence, Cardinal Supich, we're all here because kids aren't allowed to be born. This whole argument is false because instead of talking Catholic principles, which would be, we are made in the image and likeness of God. We have human dignity because we are created by Almighty God. We have a soul. We have an immortal soul that goes on into the afterlife. No matter how we die, we all have souls. We're in the image of God. And not only that, God himself, the second person of the Holy Trinity, became man in the Immaculate Womb of the Virgin Mary. And that gives even greater supernatural dignity to humanity. That God became an embryo. The Word was made flesh. That's how a Catholic talks. I'm not going to get up there and quote Hannah Arendt about the miracle is that we're born to begin. No, dogs are born. Chimpanzees are born. Kitty cats are born. All kinds of stuff is born. That's not a miracle. That doesn't give it dignity or meaning. An atheist would laugh in your face to say, well, we're born and that's the miracle of our meaning. Sharks are born, right? I can't believe this is the quality of Catholic teaching that we get in one of the deepest crises of human history. Well, I do believe it because the man is attacking the traditional Latin mass. That's all you need to know. All right, let's go. There's more. I'm going to back it up a bit for context. Of human affairs from its normal natural rune is ultimately the fact of our experience that we're born. We're born always to begin. It's a compelling insight that forces us to see that by taking it's not a compelling insight tell that to the hundreds of thousands of babies humans who were never born supich they were never born basically your argument that you're using robs the dignity of all the ones who were killed before birth i feel like i'm taking crazy pills i can't you don't need a phd in philosophy to see the utter folly of this point being human of us as human beings Sorry, taking human of us as human beings dies denying the child in the womb to be born treating the lives of immigrants the elderly the sick those on death row the weakest in society the victims of but we got to we got to throw the babies in the womb right up there with immigrants and those on death row. Like, I mean, we gotta, we gotta just shove the agenda down our throats. It can never be that abortion is a horrible crime. They gotta mix that pot with that Bernadine sauce. I'm sick and tired of this. I'm so, as Mother Teresa said, I'm so sick of you liberal, modernist, heretical, air quote, scare quote, church.
I'm so tired of this Bernadine sauce mixed in with the meat of Catholic dogma. Don't give it to us. It's poison. Of us as human beings dies, denying the child in the womb to be born, treating the lives of immigrants, the elderly, the sick, those on death row, the weakest in society, the victims of poverty, war, and famine, as though human life is disposable, sends a message that the life of every human being is meaningless. Today, I want to... Why do you promote a president who promotes that? Why do you protect a president who promotes that and says he's Catholic? I understand if someone is not a Catholic and they're confused on true morality, they might even be confused on natural law. They wouldn't know Catholic dogma. But if you're a Catholic cardinal and you have a Catholic president and he's not just confused, but he is openly defying the Lord Jesus Christ and he's actually attacking the infants in the womb. How can you say any of this? And that's why he's being heckled. That's why he's being heckled. Say a special word to the young people who are here today. When we speak, when you speak to your... The people are saying, tell Joe Biden, tell Joe Biden, because they know there's a contradiction here. Tell Joe Biden. The young people who are here today, when we speak, when you speak to your peers, when you look for ways in which you want to save the child in the womb, I would ask you to help them. Now, these people won't let me talk because they're not here to receive. No, the people are mad, Supich. The people are mad. They're heckling you because there's a contradiction in your words and in your behavior. You know, I think what's going to happen here, I think Cardinal Supich, he's seen this. I don't know if they've seen this yet in Rome. But the Vatican, Pope Francis's team, they're going to see this footage. They're going to see this. And they're going to realize, oh, wow, American Catholics don't like Supich. American Catholics are heckling our guy, our number one guy. What are we going to do? Do we need to bring in James Martin? Do we need to bring in Bishop Barron? Do we need to bring in Cardinal Dolan? What are we going to do? We're losing the narrative. They've lost the narrative. They don't even know. You know, you just on Epiphany, Francis is preaching against these these Catholics that want this dead language. He's talking about us. He's talking about me. He's talking about you. The Latin mass Catholics who want to end the A word. We want our kids to be raised in the one true faith with 100% of Catholic dogma, 100% of Catholic morality. And in our deepest soul, we long that our children would go to schools taught by nuns, in habits, and that they would go to mass where there's no nonsense and Eucharistic abuse, that they would be saturated with Gregorian chant and see priest in dignity in the cassock, preaching the epistle and the gospel, hearing confessions and absolving sin and not saying, well, that's not really a sin. Well, actually, the church used to be hung up on sexual morality, but now we're not anymore. That's not a sin. We long in our souls for a restoration of truth and of purity, goodness, dogma, charity, hope, faith. We don't want to listen to our priests and hear the agenda of the United Nations or the agenda of the Democratic Party. I don't want to hear how the gospel Every single week relates to immigration. How many of you are tired of hearing that? Raise your hand. Say something in the comments. 
Give it a thumbs up if you agree. Do you really want to hear how the gospel every week has something to do with immigration? Over and over and over. This is why I say you got to find traditional Latin mass. You got to migrate. Great Catholic migration. You got to migrate. That means you have to move and you can with your job. Do it. That's why I recommend Real Estate for Life, realestateforlife.org. Tell them Dr. Taylor Marshall sent you. It's true. We may not have the schools that have the nuns and the habits. We may not have the big, beautiful downtown Chicago parishes full of families with Gregorian chant and Latin mass and confessions all week long on Sundays, Eucharistic adoration, blessed benediction of the blessed sacrament, Eucharistic processions, Marian processions. We may not have that, but we're working for it. I want my grandkids to have it. I want my great grandkids to have it. And I want, when I'm dead, hopefully I want priests to say the Latin Mass for me, but I want my, my grandkids and my grandkids to say, you know what? Let's pray for our old Papa Marshall, Papa Taylor Marshall, old grandpa. He wasn't perfect. He made mistakes. We all know that. He was our dad, our grandfather, our great-grandfather. But you know what? He fought for something beautiful. He fought for Catholic dogma and the restoration of the Roman Rite. And thank God that we've been able to, to experience it some. That's my hope. That's my hope. I've already had the radical acceptance that I'm probably going to die in this life not having seen it. But I hope it does come. All right, we're not done with Supich's speech yet. Y'all want to finish it? Here we go. Sends a message that the life of every human being is meaningless. Today, I want to say a special word to the young people who are here today. When we speak, when you speak to your peers, when you look for ways in which you want to save the child in the womb, I would ask you to help them. Now, these people won't let me talk because they're not here to respect the unborn. They're not here to respect you. So tell them, tell your friends that the advocacy for the human right to life. You can tell in his voice he's scared, by the way. You can tell the way his voice is weakening he's scared. He's lost the narrative. not here to respect you. So tell them, tell your friends that the advocacy for the human right to life at all stages, we're fighting to defend the truth that we're born in order not to die, but in order to begin. My hope, though, is that you will continue to fight for the right to the life of the unborn. That's what should unite us all. That's what's so important. God bless you all. Booze. There is some cheering. It's mostly booze. And that's it. And that's it. Now, people will say, hey, shouldn't we respect cardinals, clergy? Yes, we should, by all means. By all means. But one of the most important teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ, one of the most explicit an open teachings of Jesus Christ is, you shall know them by their fruits. And if someone lies to my face, if someone promotes the agenda that would destroy a little one in the womb, if someone undermines the other bishops who are trying to do something positive in that regard, then you don't have my respect. I respect the office. I respect the sacred crimson of the cardinalate. But if you're the kind of person who is going to promote self-professing Catholics in our church and in our nation, and you're going to run off and tattletale and provide cover for those people, 
We can't respect that. We can't respect it. I'm most certainly not generating animosity. I'm not generating disobedience. In fact, I would tell y'all, all of y'all, to respect the sacred offices of the church. With, by the way, you shall know them by their fruits. You shall know them by their fruits. Remember, several months ago, I said one of the most important principles that you can learn as a human person, especially as a Catholic, but any human, is the Latin proverb, octa non verba. Octa non verba. Let me put it on the screen for you. I'm not a man who gets tattoos. I don't have any tattoos. But this would be one if I was going to get it. If you follow this bit of advice, man, you will miss a lot of misfortune in your life. It means actions, not words. Act and non verba. Actions, not words. The, the kind of American version of that is, is actions speak louder than words. I have met all kind of people who have made claims and promises. They've pretended to be my friend. They've pretended to be friends of our family. They've pretended to be Catholics. They've pretended to be Christians. They've pretended to be honest business people. But it was all words. There was lies. All of you watching right now have had that experience. Sometimes it's people really close to us. Some people that even share our table and dip bread with us in the same cup like Judas Iscariot with our Lord Jesus Christ. Watch their actions. Not just their words. In this case, Cardinal Supic, his words were, were not inspiring and his words were not really in line with Catholic teaching. Hannah Arendt were born to begin. That's the miracle that gives us meaning. That is garbage. As I said, dogs are born, monkeys are born. That's not a miracle. It doesn't give meaning to them. What gives meaning to human life is that we are made and created in the image of likeness of God. Why can't a cardinal of the church just quote Genesis? Because a lot of these people in Chicago don't believe Genesis is real. By the way, props to everybody doing the one-year Bible plan. We're on day 10. I scratched it off today. I'm reading the Bible in one year with y'all. I, I believe Genesis is real. But a lot of these Chicago Catholic clergy, they don't believe Genesis is real. They believe it's an allegory, it's a myth, it's made up. It's like a Sumerian legend. They're not going to quote that. They're going to quote Hannah Arendt. Why not say Jesus Christ entered the immaculate womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary? He himself, the Word, was made flesh. He was a tiny embryo in the sacred womb of Mary. He provides even greater dignity to human life. Why can't a successor of the apostles teach the very basics of human dignity? Why must they run off to the vain philosophies? I love philosophy. I got a PhD in philosophy. I love philosophy. But I'm not going to get to heaven and my kids aren't going to get to heaven. By being a really great philosopher. We get to heaven by grace. Not by secret knowledge. And not by being born. In fact, Christ was very explicit about that. What did he say in John chapter 3? You must be born again. See, being born is not enough. You must be born again. Born of water and the Holy Ghost. It's talking about baptism, the necessity of baptism. Which is one reason why abortion is so horrific. I said the A word. Now, now YouTube is not going to like this video. Oh, well. Please like it anyway. Share it. 
I asked the question. So acta non verba. Everybody tonight at your dinner table with your loved ones and your friends or whoever you're with. Say, hey, you know what? I heard something today. It was kind of interesting. Acta non verba. You know what that means? Actions, not words. Or actions, not just words. You know, it's really important that we live and we do what we believe and not just talk about it. I asked the question before the show, did a poll. Do the United States bishops as a body promote a consistent pro-life ethic? And 90% of you said no. Cardinal Supich, USCCB, you got a problem. People do not think that your eminences and your excellencies are consistent. They think you're inconsistent. And when children look up to their parents, you know, children, you want to talk about octa non verba. Children look at actions more than they look at words. When I think about my life as a father with my eight kids, maybe one day my kids will be watching this. I would just say, I'm sorry for my actions that were contradictory to my words. I know in my own life that I've had that own, my own contradictions. Because kids go off octa non verba. You can tell them all you want, but they want to see it in action. In fact, I would say that to young parents. Make sure, make sure that your kids see you living the faith for real. You can't fake it with your kids because they see you all the time. So yeah, we asked people and they said, yeah, USCCB is inconsistent. How do they expect us when they say no more Latin mass it's divisive? They wouldn't say it like that. No more Latin mass. It's divisive. That Latin mass is so divisive. We're concerned about Vatican II. Every jot and tittle of Vatican II or you lose your cookie. No more Latin mass for you people. Isn't that right, James Martin? They're worried about enforcing that on you and me more than they are worried about the United States president promoting and funding with our money the murder of babies in the womb. And they'll hop on a plane like the man we just saw and go tattletale and work deals in Rome to protect and to hide that fact. Octa non verba. Or Christ's teaching, you shall know them by their fruits. You know, we Catholics talk a lot about apostolic succession. We believe that Peter and the other 11 apostles laid hands on the first generation of bishops and imparted the Holy Ghost onto them by the laying on of hands on their head. And then those bishops laid hands on another, a new round and consecrated new bishops. And then on and on and on, so that the bishops of our time have an unbroken line of apostolic succession of hands placed on every generation, so that a bishop today, that that linkage of hands being laid goes all the way back to one of the 12 apostles. That's called apostolic succession. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. But apostolic succession is necessary. We can never break it. It is of the essence of the Catholic church. But we also need some apostolic success. See, the apostolic successors should also have some success in evangelizing and converting the world. And that has to do with octa non verba. The apostles didn't just preach. They worked mighty deeds. They were great saints. They were holy men. Those who were around the apostles were like, whoa, I want what they have. Octa non verba. 
We need bishops. We need priests. We need cardinals. We need popes who have apostolic succession and apostolic success. And that has to do with fidelity to dogma, fidelity to morality, fidelity to scripture, fidelity to tradition, sacred tradition, fidelity to the magisterium, fidelity to the rubrics of the divine liturgy, not what they do in Chicago with Father Fleger, making up their own Eucharistic prayer, making up their own Christmas liturgy, and Supich doesn't care. Octa non verba. You shall know them by their fruits. You shall know them by their fruits. Christ told us two important things in this regard, and then we'll sign off. You shall know them by their fruits, and beware of wolves in sheep's clothing. In other words, Christ knew that a normative problem for his disciples, for Christians over time, was that there was going to be wolves dressed up like sheep in our midst. So he's warning us, hey, not everyone around you in the church is an actual sheep. There are wolves in sheep's clothing around you, and I want you to beware of them. Now, he didn't say, how would you know which ones are which, but I think we can imply by saying when he says you shall know them by their fruits, we can look around and say, you know, that, that sheep over there has really big teeth. That, that sheep over there barks like a dog. Uh, that sheep over there snarls. That sheep over there is big. That sheep over there, he keeps biting other sheep and attacking other sheep. He's even eating other sheep. Oh, that's a wolf in sheep's clothing. And then we sound the alarm and we run away. Fruitless, yeah, uh, Maggie says, fruitless wolves. I like that. Fruitless wolves. All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Just want to say, zero animosity, zero disobedience, but lots of disappointment. Zero animosity, zero disobedience, but lots of contradiction, lots of disappointment, lots of concern down here in the lady land, down here in sheep world. We're looking up at the shepherds and thinking, man, that doesn't make any sense. We want to obey. We want to honor. We want to love and charity. We want to follow our bishops and our pope into spiritual warfare with St. Michael hovering above us in the battle. But we can't when you're at a cocktail party with Biden and Pelosi drinking apple teenies. Let's pray Hail Mary for our hierarchy. O Ramos, nomine patris et fide, et spiritus sancti, amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tu, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, or pronobis peccatoribus, nunc editor mortis nostre. Amen. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Nomine patris et fide, et spiritus sancti. Amen. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to support this show, if you'd like me to send you some signed books, you want a signed copy of Infiltration to learn how we got into this mess, you can do so by going to patreon.com forward slash DR Taylor Marshall. You can support this podcast, this YouTube channel, my writing projects. Um, I have a, another book coming out this year. If you want to support that and uh, be on the team helping me out with that, I'd really appreciate it. You can learn more at patreon.com forward slash DR Taylor Marshall. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. Please share this video on Facebook and get the share button. And all you do is after you hit share, you hit click Facebook and then boom, it does it for you. Thanks to everybody who shares this. You are my algorithm and I appreciate that. And if you want to get more uh, Catholic info,